everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today I am going to try to do a brief video and I will say that whenever I start one of these videos brevity is always the goal but it never seems to work out that way because I talk too much. But I do think that this one will be a bit of a shorter one, hopefully, uh, and that is to talk about five books that I think make particularly good reads for people who are interested in writing fantasy. I know on booktube and just in the world at large there's a lot of overlap between people who really love to read and who really love to write. And I think that some of that comes from the fact that it can be so empowering and so inspirational to read these amazing works by authors that you really admire and that that builds some drive in you to try to replicate that or to take part of it and make it your own. And obviously a fascination with the written word can manifest as reading or writing. And I think that there is just a lot of natural overlap between those two hobbies. Certainly a lot of people on booktube seem to be really interested in writing. And so I think that these are some books that can really be fulfilling as a reader, ones that I think and hope that you'll really enjoy, but also books that I think hone particular skills that can be helpful for writing. There are so many books that I have read over the course of my lifetime that I think exemplify some of the things that uh, make authors particularly successful. For this video, I wanted to choose fantasy books because that's what this channel focuses on is fantasy. And I also wanted to choose books that I feel highlight a particular attribute. So I have chosen five books that I feel like are fairly distinct from one another. Some of them, actually, I think most of them I've chatted about at least in passing on the channel before, which makes sense because these are books that I really admire, so they are more likely to come up in certain types of videos. I will say just as a disclaimer, I am not a writer. I really like to write, even though I don't write a lot of fantasy, I feel very intimidated because I love fantasy so much and I don't ever feel like I can live up to the books that I admire so much. Uh, but I do like to write and I like to think about the writing process a lot when I'm reading. I like to think about why is this book working for me when this similar book didn't really seem to. And I spend a lot of time as I'm reading trying to pick up on what it is that I enjoy about the prose or the characters or what particular authors do. And I hope that I can share some of those reflections with you. But if you are interested in writing, I think that these are five books that would be really, really excellent to check out. The first two I don't have in physical copy, so I'll talk about those first and just pop a photo up here for you. And the first one is probably the most obvious on the list because this is in fact a memoir on writing itself. And this book is called On Writing by Stephen King. It is no uh, surprise to anybody on this channel that I am a huge Stephen King fan, and his memoir on writing is actually one of my favorite books by him. It is the book after the Books of the Dark Tower series that I have read the most by him. I have reread a couple of his books, but I've read On Writing many, many times because I just think that it is so fascinating and so valuable. In this selection, Stephen King gives us a rundown of some common tricks and tips for writers. He talks about what kinds of struggles he had in becoming a writer, what you need to expect, um, you know, what can be helpful in getting you started, and what kind of a role luck and other outside factors play in terms of becoming successful in your field. I also just think that he has had a really interesting life. He's very um, candid about the things that he has gone through, about his influences, about his difficulties and his struggles. And I think that regardless of whether or not you enjoy his body of work, if you feel that his writing is for you, I think there's a lot of really helpful information in this book. I think that it can be um, very motivating for people who are interested in writing to read this. And I really like Stephen King's self-deprecating style. I think that he's a little bit too harsh on himself. In this book, he refers to himself as the literary equivalent of a Big Mac and French fries, which I don't think is true. Uh, but he, he does have that 
that type of humor that kind of permeates the book and it makes it a very easy read. His style is very breezy, you know, at any time, but this book is very easy to flip through, especially when you contrast it with some writing manuals that can be very technically heavy and a little bit dry when you're trying to read through them. So if you're interested in writing at all, I think that this is an excellent jumping off point. No question. The second book that I don't have a physical copy of is a book that I read for a book club a couple of years ago, and that book is called A Man Called Thursday by G.K. Chesterton. And this book uh, came onto my radar because it is known to be one of Neil Gaiman's works of inspiration. So this is a book that really heavily inspired him. It's a book that he talks about having stuck with him and a book that does a couple of things particularly well. I won't talk a lot about the plot because this is a very, very short book and it is the type of book that works best if you know very little about it. It is not even really technically a fantasy. It is a psychological thriller is probably the best way to describe it, but it does have this very rich atmosphere that makes it feel almost like a fantasy novel or at the very least like magical realism, um, magical realism gone wrong perhaps. But this and what I really wanted to talk about in terms of this book is that sense of atmosphere that Chesterton builds up. When I talk about atmosphere, because I know that's kind of a nebulous term and some people might think like, what does that even mean? And it is something that I want to touch on in a future video. But for the purposes of this description, what I mean by atmosphere is the author making the reader feel as if they are completely immersed in the story. So when I read this book, I felt like I was living the, the situation along with the main character. You feel almost trapped within this book when you read it and there's a sense of doom and a sense of urgency that follows you as you read through. And the fact that Chesterton can do that, he can build that feeling and build that anticipation in you in such a short number of pages is, is really an amazing feat. This is not an easy book. So it's not a book that, at least not a book that I could pick up and flip through and kind of half pay attention to and then come out feeling entirely fulfilled. This was a book that demanded um, a careful reading. It demanded you to think about what is happening. And even if there is some struggle on the journey through the book, I really think that by the time you finish it and you place it to the side and you think about what you just read, there's so much value in that. I think that this is a perfect book for anyone who is interested in writing, whether that is fantasy or some related genre. I think that this is the type of book that could only help you develop your skills as an author and give you new things to think about and a new scope you can use to, to analyze your own writing and your own potential novel. So those are the two that I don't have on hand, uh, but I do have a couple of other books that I plucked from my shelf that I wanted to talk a little bit today. And one is a is very closely related to a book that's come up in a recent video, so I apologize for kind of doubling down on this. But one book that I think you need to read if you're interested in writing fantasy in particular is really anything by Neil Gaiman, but I think in particular his short stories. So the collection that I grabbed is Smoke and Mirrors. Uh, this is not the collection I talked about in my last, I think it was like science fiction fantasy palette cleansers, but really any of Neil Gaiman's short story collections are phenomenal. And in terms of imagination, if you're not into short stories, then I would also point you in the direction of the Sandman comics, because I really think that his imagination is on full display in those comic books. And I think that it would serve the same purpose. But for people who would like something shorter, they don't want to get into an entire comic series, Neil Gaiman's short stories showcase his talents so well. I love Neil Gaiman and I love so many things about him as a writer. I think that his prose is beautiful. So I think technically he is a very astute writer. I think that his 
themes are always very deep. There's a lot of thematic resonance in the books that he writes. There's a lot to think about, a lot to discuss. They're excellent books to read as buddy reads or as part of a book club because there's always a lot to talk about. And I think that people can come out of a book by Neil Gaiman with completely different views on what happened or what he intended or what his goal was when he went into writing that story. So those always make phenomenal books for discussion. But the thing that I admire the most about Neil Gaiman and what I think is is showcased at its highest level in his short stories are his imagination and the range that he has as a writer. This is someone who can write something from the goofiest middle grade to the darkest fantasy and pull it all off equally well. His writing can be whimsical, it can be creepy. He has such a command over his use of language and he has such a wild and untamed imagination that so much of what he does lands for me. He, I think that he is phenomenal. I think that he is well worth reading. He doesn't get talked about a lot on booktube and I, I wonder if that's maybe because he hasn't had a huge um, fantasy release for a long time, but he is well worth checking out. And I think if you want to develop your skills as a writer, short stories are so easy to get into. They're so, so many packed inside like a, a regular sized novel. And at least for me, in terms of Neil Gaiman short stories, I don't ever leave feeling like I'm not satisfied by the story because I think that he does such a good job in such a range of mediums that his short stories don't ever feel unresolved or unfinished, which I can understand people have that, that feeling about short stories in general. But yes, if you are interested in writing fantasy, then most definitely I would recommend Neil Gaiman's short stories. The next book, I'm just going to lay this here. The next book that I want to talk about is another uh, that is a little bit tougher, but well worth the read. And that is Mervyn Peake's Titus Grown. So the, what I think is particularly good about this book is Peake's use of setting. So this is kind of a gothic fantasy. It, again, is one that's not really talked about a whole lot on booktube but it focuses on the inhabitants of a castle known as Castle Gormenghast. And these are a collection of gothic fantasy characters that live this very almost mundane life that is comprised of these ritualistic behaviors. So there is a schedule of events that need to happen at Castle Gormenghast and it's up to the master of the castle to ensure that these rituals are followed and that they they do the things that they're supposed to do. And what happens at the beginning of Titus Grown is that the birth of Titus uh, sets off a cascade of events uh, in the castle and it, it is so fascinating. The characters in this book are very rich, very well drawn and will definitely stick with you. But it's the setting of Castle Gormenghast and how Mervyn Peak brings that castle to life, how he can make you visualize it and understand it and accept it as one of the characters of the novel. That is really where this book shines. This is a very dense book. If you are a plot driven reader, if you like action focused fantasy, don't even pick it up because you're just going to hate it. And then you're going to think that I give bad recommendations. So don't read it because it will not be for you. This is dense. The language is purposefully archaic. There's a lot of meandering in terms of the story. There's a lot of rich descriptions, but if you take the time to read through it, if you give it the care that the book demands, it is so worthwhile at the end. This is a hugely imaginative book. This is really unlike a lot of other fantasy that I have read. And it is a shame that it doesn't get more recognition because once you make your way through it, it is a book that will stick with you for a really long time. And it's also a book, at least for me, it took me a lot longer to read this than it would another book of a typical size, which is only 390 pages. Uh, so maybe that's why it has stuck out so vividly for me as well is because I really did take my time to go through it. The book demanded that of me. I, this was not one that I could breeze through. 
But I, I really think if you're interested in writing fantasy, of in building up your own fantasy world and making your setting feel like it, it can come to life and be a real place that you can visualize, then Titus Grown is a must read, 100%. The last book that I'm going to talk about is one that gets a lot of airtime on BookTube. It's one that I've talked about a lot uh, and is definitely the most one of the most accessible books on this list, but I still feel like I had to talk about it. And that is Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. So really, I'm, I'm talking about the Farseer trilogy, and I'm sure you could read any of the Realm of Elderlings and get the same things out of them. Because what I think Robin Hobb does particularly well is her character work. Uh, the Farseer trilogy focuses on one character that's the character of Fitz, but there are a host of rich secondary characters as well. But for anybody who is interested in writing fantasy and wants an, an actual masterclass in character development and writing a believable character, then I don't think you can do any better than Fitz from this book. This may not be the story for everyone. It is a character-driven novel. Uh, Robin Hobb also has some very beautiful prose, but she does lean heavily into her descriptions at times. It's more of a slower-paced, introspective fantasy novel. It is one of my very favorite trilogies of all time. I would call Robin Hobb one of my favorite authors, and I have only, as of yet, read the Farseer trilogy. I've been kind of dragging my heels on the live ship traders because I don't like books that are set at sea, and I would really just like to dive into Fitz. But I am going to read the rest soon because I want to get on to the rest of the Fitz novels. Uh, but if you're looking for a writer who has built up a character who feels very true to life, whose actions some of which you will be so mad about, you will be so frustrated with Fitz at times, but whose actions accurately reflect the type of person that he is, whose reactions and thoughts and feelings all hail back to his psychological character. They all make sense in terms of the person that he is, the experiences he had as a child, the, the influence that he has taken from the people who have molded him into the person that they want him to be. It is done so, so well in the Farseer trilogy. Robin Hobb is a beautiful author, and I can't think of anyone even Joe Abercrombie, whose characters I love. I can't think of anyone who I feel can top Robin Hobb in terms of creating a complex, dynamic, realistic character. So if you are interested in writing anything, uh, but especially in writing fantasy, then I think that her character work is something that you most definitely need to experience. It is, it's phenomenal. I had such a good time reading these. I could turn around and read them all over again and fall in love with Fitz all over again and be frustrated and angry and happy for and proud of him all at once because he, her characters just elicit all of those emotions out of you. And I think she does a, fit, a fantastic job with her secondary characters as well. In first person narratives, it can be kind of tricky to um, grow your secondary characters, but I think that Robin Hobb also has a very precise command of that particular skill as well. But that is it. Those are five novels that I think are particularly rich, particularly rewarding, and an excellent jumping off point for anybody who is interested in writing fantasy or honing their craft. If you have read any books, fantasy or otherwise, that you think are must reads for people who are interested in writing, then please let me know. I would love to hear about them. I would love to chat about them with you, and I will see you with another video soon. Bye.